Welcome to this week's episode of How Things Work on Let's Talk Automotive. And in today's episode, we are going to be talking about seatbelts and in particular, a very special device that we find on our seatbelts, which is our pretensioner. Now, let's take a few steps back and just have a little chat about seatbelts and why it is so important from a safety point of view to wear your seatbelt. So first of all, we did some calculations a little bit earlier on and we worked out that if you have an accident in a vehicle at 100 kilometers an hour and you hit into a solid object, if you are not wearing your seatbelt, you will experience up to 100 Gs of impact force. And the threshold normally for survivability is 40 Gs. So there's no doubt that you're gonna be in serious, serious danger if you're not wearing a seatbelt. However, if you do wear a seatbelt, the G-forces are reduced down to about 20 in the same accident. So you're very much within your survivability range. So let's put that in perspective. When Romain Grosjean had his accidents in the last round of the Grand Prix in Bahrain last year, his accident yielded a G-force rating of 80 Gs. So if you're not wearing your seatbelt, you're going to be in a worse off position than Romain Grosjean was in his accident and you're only going 100 kilometers an hour. So it's absolutely critical. So how does a seatbelt save our lives? Well, there are a couple of functions that a seatbelt performs. And I've got one right here with me, and we're gonna also talk to the pretensioner as well. So first things first, the seatbelt these days has a little bit of stretch in it. I can't really simulate it now, but I promise you in an accident, my body weight would cause this seatbelt to stretch a little bit. And what that's doing is, is it's slowing me down a little bit. The second thing that our seatbelt has is a load force limiter, which is actually a very strong spring that's connected to the end of the seatbelt. And that again allows a little bit more movement in my body when I'm really, really putting a lot of forces against the seatbelt. And what that does is, is once again, it just slows me down. And by slowing me down, I'm now getting rid of a whole lot of kinetic energy. So we have three types of pretensioners that we find on a vehicle. So the first one is a mechanical pretensioner, and I can demonstrate that with this seatbelt over here. So you can see that when I pull on the seatbelt, the pretensioner will tighten up the seatbelt a little bit. Then we have an electronic pretensioner, which uses an electric motor to wind up the seatbelt. But the most sophisticated version that we have is a pyrotechnic pretensioner. And we find pyrotechnic pretensioners as standard equipment even on the Suzuki Espresso that we're standing next to over here. So this is in fact the pretensioner from this vehicle. Now what does a pretensioner do for us when it's got pyrotechnics in it? So one of the things that I want to avoid is an impulse force that I'll experience if my seatbelt is a little bit loose. What the pretensioner does is that when the vehicle's in an accident, the same sensors that trigger my airbags will also trigger this pretensioner and it'll immediately tighten up the seatbelt and push me back into my car seat. And that'll stop me from having any forward movement relative to the seatbelt. And that's gonna dramatically reduce the forces that I experience. And that's why with a pretensioner on our seatbelt in a 100K in our accident, we can dramatically reduce the G-forces. So how does the pretensioner work? Well, we have a pinion that has gears on it. We have a piston that has the same matching gears. And then we have our pyrotechnic gases that are released when the system is activated. And these pyrotechnic gases push through this pipe over here and cause the piston to move up in this motion. And as it's moving up, it winds up the pinion, which then pulls me back into my seat. So a remarkable device that is certainly saving lives in the event of a heavy impact and is a must have on vehicles these days. So I hope you found that useful and that you now understand what a pretensioner does. And we look forward to seeing you on future episodes of Let's Talk Automotive.